When you look at the odds, you see the undefeated Gaziev, heavy puncher, straight shots, puts it on you, puts some pressure. New life in the heavyweight division. You'd love to see it. But AJ, is this a trap card? Is this like one of those trap games right here? Rosenstroke gonna come in, he's gonna upset the world because people forgot, because he's not fighting the upper echelon anymore? Or is this just new life that's ready to take over? What do you think? It has the stench of trap game, Derek, especially because of the way Rosenstrike's last fights have been going. Like you said, he's been fall through in a little bit. We saw the kind of power he has against the Dawkins brothers, against one of my favorites, man, Chris, Chris Dawkins out there. So we know he has the power to shut people down. It's just all a matter it takes is, is if Gaziev is willing to put himself in those same positions and, and Rosenstrike can land the punches because after that, then we're looking good. If Rosenstrike can keep this fight on his feet, he's going to be doing well in this one. But Derek, I mean, how how... What are the what are the uh, likelihood that it comes out and it kind of ends up like the Jelton Almeida uh, match that Rosenstrike just had? I'm seeing a ground game attack right here out of Gaziev. I got a little bit of a theory right here. I wanted to save it for a second, but let's jump straight into it, man. Listen, I really like this matchup, folks. I think this is an interesting matchup, but I also think it's one that's tailor-made to Jarzinho Rosenstroik. Now, I did a little bit of research, and one of the fights that I looked back on to just kind of get a consensus comparison was Rosenstroik versus uh, Junior Dos Santos. Heavy puncher. If he needed to grapple, he can grapple. Solid boxing and is willing to walk you down. Well, what happens, AJ? I don't know if you remember who won that fight, but Rosenstroik got the knockout in that fight, right? Why? Because this is a five-round fight. That's the number one key right here. Shamil Gaziev in his last 10 has not gone past three, and he's only gone three one time. Rosenstroik has gone five twice, one and one in those bouts, but more importantly, he's a slow starter. We all know this. So what's he aiming to do? In my estimation, Rosenstroik is going to start off slow. He's going to check any leg kicks that come his way, right? Any of those calf kicks, he's going to check them, and he's going to start throwing those calf kicks to start wearing out the, the boxing of Gaziev. Now, one thing we know about Gaziev is this dude comes on quick, he comes on fast, and he's putting a lot of oomph into all of these shots. So what my question is, is if Rosenstroy can survive one and two, what does three, four, and five look like if they make it there? This is heavyweight, right? And that's the big question mark. So without giving away the whole game plan, because we still need something to talk about on this matchup right here, I think that we exploit the gas tank of Shamil Gaziev, and we use UFC veteranship from Rosenstroik very similar to the way that uh, we just saw it a couple, a couple of weeks back. You remember the matchup that I'm talking about? No, nah, not the top end of the heavyweight matchup. No, nah, main event, um, um, Jack Hermanson. There we go. Jack Hermanson over Joe Pfeiffer. UFC veteranship, cardio, five rounds. It's a different story. That's the way that I'm seeing this matchup play out. That's why I'm heavy on Jarzinho Rosenstroik. But what do you have coming back on the end from Gaziev? I like it, Derek. And, and when thinking about how this fight breaks down, yeah, if Rosenstroy can can get on that bike or not even not even necessarily get on the bike, just avoid the big blast, the big blitz that Gaziev is going to be putting on him and avoid that pressure and make this a very technical match. I can see where you're coming from. The only thing, man, is is, is heavy weights and all it takes is one moment, mm -hmm. one issue. And that's for either fighter. Jarzino Rosenstroy or Gaziev right here. Both of them can finish this one in a matter of instances. And with the way and the momentum that, that things seem to be playing out, I kind of like Gaziev right here, man. I see him putting a hurting on right at the beginning because he knows he's untested in those fourth and those fifth rounds. And if it does get there, I do think Rosenstrike is going to have the advantage right here. It's just a matter of whoever's going to be fighting their style on, on that night, whoever does it better that night. Question, why do you think the odds makers have the TKO prop for a Rosenstrike at plus 125 with the plus 175 comeback prop for Gaziev? I just think it's because uh, Rosenstroik is more of the technical, polished fighter. I mean, if you think of Rosenstroik in all his fights, I mean, he came from the kickboxing background. He's a champ there, and he's able to be flashy, be be not necessarily unpredictable, but hit you with things that you're not seeing coming. For Gaziev, he's just a classic, just brawl you down, walk you down, and beat you up kind of guy. So I think that plays into it a little bit right there, Derek. That's it. No, that's a fair assessment right there. So the last thing that I'll say is you look at the plus 275 submission prop for Gaziev, has a couple of rear naked chokes in his last. Last 10. I'm almost a fan on the Rosenstroik camp of saying, let Gaziev grapple early because you grapple early and you're not able to finish the fight. This is nothing but Rosenstroik's uh, in his favor unless he gets submitted, of course, and then the fight's over. Then it doesn't matter. I'm just going to leave this final note here and then we can wrap this one up. You're going from Martin Boudet, who, no disrespect, this dude was, he had a really good record, but in levels of, of heavyweight, it's a little bit of a different level to go from Martin Boudet to Jarzinho Rosenstroik, where Jarzinho Rosenstroik's losses are coming to Francis Ngannou, Cyril Gan, Curtis Blades, Volkov, Almeida, right? I'm not saying that 
you shouldn't respect the other side, but I'm saying that this is one of those where you got to compare strength of schedule. It's heavyweights though. One shot is all it takes. As you mentioned, I like Rosenstroik. You're rocking with Gaziev. The only final question before we leave here is over and under one and a half rounds over or under. Ooh, if you're betting with me, folks, I like that under right here, but I can see how this fight plays out multiple ways. I, I'm like Gaziev in this fight, man. I think he's going to start off fast, start off strong, and get this fight over with before he gets a little tired. I'm either going to be a millionaire after this fight or I'm going to be dumb and I'm going to hold some accountability hour, but I'm taking the over one and a half rounds plus 160 over one and a half. Gotta love it right there. All right, folks, that is your main event.